Hey everyone, this is SPC Playing Field, and in this video, we're going to be doing a massive unboxing of all these things. These include uh, prizes they got from an arcade at Dave & Buster's in Orlando, and at another arcade also in Orlando. And we'll be unboxing all those, along with a few gifts I got for Christmas this year. So, we got a lot of stuff to cover, so why don't we get started? We'll go with small, and then we'll save the best for last. That's what we'll do. First up, we have this miniature bowling set. I believe I got this from Andretti. Andretti Orlando. So I believe I did get this from Andretti Orlando. Yeah, Andretti is a... It's a race. It's a racetrack kind of place. Yeah, it's it's well known for racing. However, however, they also have an arcade, and 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 Orlando is one of its few locations that they have. So here's a look at the set. I'll just show you here. Hmm, how did this get cut? I'm assuming it was a manufacturing error on this specific one, but that's all right. So pretty much this is just like any old, old ordinary bowling. See? I might, uh, I make do some videos on this set a little later on. Maybe make a whole, uh, Maybe make a large bowling alley at some point. However, I don't really know what I have, uh, what the future's in store for many of these bowling sets. But, but I can tell you that I have, but I can tell you that I do have a bunch of plans coming for many of these sets here. I'm actually just going to go ahead and remove the tape completely so that way I don't have to. worry about the the cover so I don't have to worry about the cover that's number one and next up are these little uh, are these little toy police cuffs pretty easy to unbox I mean I know I'm not into I'm not really into criminal investigation, but pretty much these are just ordinary handcuffs, you know? Like when like when people get arrested, they would uh, the police would put handcuffs on their back. Um all that kind of stuff. Well, this is just like that, really. It even has some keys to go along with it. Now it's best that for this specific thing, I'm going to keep the bag and the actual thing itself. I'm not going to use this full time, but maybe at some later, and maybe at a later point I will. Not full time. Okay, that's number two. Next up we have um, some of these jumbo playing cards. Has a, has a couple of flaps, but here you go. Yeah, just your standard playing card deck switched between clubs and aces and jacks and all that. I have a, I have a larger set of cards, but these are very jumbo. I mean, I mean, I wonder if we could uh, maybe someday play catch 21 with these. I don't think many of you uh, under, uh, know what Catch-21 is. Basically, pretty much Catch-21 is like a, it's a poker kind of game show. Where pretty much, yeah, you know, players have to answer trivia questions to build a hand of cards. And the goal is to get 21. So... 
that's kind of what I think these playing cards are for, and I have an even larger set, which I think that's probably what those Catch-21 cards were based off of, but that's all right. Can't close it all the way, but that's all right. So now we've unboxed these two. Now let's move on to the game boxes. This one is Pressure Luck. Now these are the ones I got from Dave and Buster. I got this one from Dave and Buster's. Now, yes, all these are classics, and these can be controlled via via the mobile app, the GameStar mobile app. Um, ugh, it wants me to. Oh, I'll just. Uh, and apparently, it wants me to create an account, but I will definitely take care of that. All right, so there we go. I got the GameStar app all set up. We'll just open up the box. Just gonna remove the, actually a couple of pieces of tape to remove. So pretty much this is exactly, well, what this GameStar app is. So basically what all this is So this is how you control the card game. It's via a mobile app, like this one here. So I can just tap a mouse on the screen, and then I can then it, that so then I can just pick random amounts, and then it randomly generates the offer, which is good. Um, this one here is pressure luck. Well, there's no there's no audio, so I have to unmute or turn on the ringer so that way I can hear it. And then when we open up, is that it? There is no more tape. Where do we open this? Oh, that's it. Okay, that's the end. Okay, so then when we open up the box, this is of course the information or instruction booklet, and then this is the scorecard. And then is that it in the box or is there more? That looks to be it, so. Oh, and there's also a pencil which is specifically for those cards. Now, what these are, uh, or what these are, are trivia cards. So what all of these are, And I don't know what's up with that, but the graphics for some reason are glitched. Probably because of the sudden change in orientation. Might be because of the sudden change in orientation. I think it'll work better if it's on like an iPad or something. But that's what this is. So then when we open up the cards here, yep, these are all of the trivia questions and these are answer cards. So these are answer cards and questions for the game. Uh, next up then is Jeopardy. Now personally, I can tell you, I am not good at this game. I am, I am terrible at Jeopardy. I'm not sure, uh, I'm not sure why it's doing landscape orientation instead of portrait like it should be doing i don't know maybe this is a bug in the game or something i don't know i don't know what is up but we can try and launch jeopardy and this is the opening sequence we don't get any of johnny gilbert A daily double will appear for a random clue. So let's see. Then clue is complete, and then we just hit clue is complete, and then everybody can buzz in. So, and then this, and this would be double jeopardy. Then if that's the final jeopardy. I could just come here for the music. 
I could just come here for the music if I wanted. If I if I wanted to, I could just come here for the final Jeopardy music and just rave to that over and over again. Because because of how good it sounds, it just sounds really good. Uh, is there any more tape? I need to open up. Okay, it looks like that's it. All right. So in here we get nearly the exact same thing. We have the instructions, scorecards. Apparently everything in this box also appears to be. Anyway, that's the pencil for the scorecards. And then this here are the clue. These are the clues and answers. Now, I don't know where the Jeopardy board is for this specific set. I'm assuming this is a pull to open flap. I like how they included that. So this is all of the categories and clues. Uh, and they're laid out each for Jeopardy. This is just a blank one. Um, well, well... This isn't really blank, it's just to indicate what round it is. So then I have all of the clues and answers and everything like that. So then there's the then there's the regular Jeopardy, the Jeopardy round, and then there's double Jeopardy, which of course you know the clues are double. So So that's Jeopardy. I'm gonna leave these blank for right now. Ah, no, I see one page is already bent. Oh, whatever, it doesn't matter. So, that's Jeopardy. And now, on to another one of my favorite game show titles. And we don't need this bag. All these scraps I'll be throwing away by the end. Hey, I don't need any of those. And I see uh, some of the tape has already been... Oh no, there's a tear already. Ah, eh, whatever. Anyway, this is my favorite game show. This is Wheel of Fortune. So this is a replica of the wheel on the actual show. However, on, a, on this, there's actually a lot of change. There's a lot of differences. Um... What are the differences? Mainly it's here. This is not supposed to be 900. This is supposed to be 650. If this, the color is correct, but if this was Celebrity Wheel of Fortune, it would be 950. And besides, there's actually going to be a new Celebrity Wheel of Fortune episode. Uh, what I believe this is here is the, I believe that's a little whiteboard card. This is the information. This is a card of all the puzzles. And these are a couple of dry erase markers because yes, this is a whiteboard. So this is a whiteboard. This is where the puzzle would be written down. So a lot of the letters are missing. I'm assuming that's all 26 of the alphabet labeled in incorrect orders. Contestants, banks, and totals, the puzzle, and the category. And then these are the puzzle cards. Those are the cards with the actual puzzles on them. And they are labeled as 2021. Now, I don't think this actually requires... Now, it does not really require the app, but it actually does have its own function on the app too. Pull them all out. Yeah, these are all of the, all the puzzles. In fact, a lot of the puzzles. This is 2021, and I don't even think it comes with any, uh, any crossword. I don't think it even comes with any crossword. I don't think it even comes with crossword puzzles, you know? You know those crossword categories from the actual show? You know, they actually rolled out and then the wheel. 
You know, that actually sounds exactly like, you know, Wheel of Fortune on the Xbox and all that good stuff. So I, I could just come in here and spin the wheel for fun. Yeah, maybe I could just come in here and spin the wheel for fun. But anyway, then here's host mode. These are all the cues. <laughs> yeah, I could have fun with this all day if I wanted to. And I see that, and here's a, here's a few other titles. Now, these are actually a few other, <laughs> imagine you're trying to look for the price of an item. Let's actually try it out with, uh, let's actually try this out with the next item that we're about to unbox. It's the on air sign. Let's see what kind of, uh, let's see what, what price it throws up. Let's see what kind of price it, let's, let's try it out with an actual item and see what it throws up. Enter code. <laughs> let's see what it throws up. Gee, I wonder what the supermarket sweep app will come up with. That, I'm assuming, was a scan. <laughs> Imagine you're actually trying to scan your grocery. <laughs> Imagine you're trying to pay for groceries by scanning them with a supermarket sweep app. <laughs> imagine. Just imagine. And, of course, that's where you set the big sweep timer. This is the super sweep. That's where you set the super sweep. And then, of course, there's my favorite, Family Feud, which has been entirely... Yeah, so everything's been entirely modified, so then I can add these to my list, which is a list of favorites. So... I don't have supermarket sweep, but I do like deal or no deal. So I'll, so I'll come back and play around with that, play around with more of these at some point. Next thing we're going to unbox is the on-air light. Uh, what has been a very common problem for my TV station is that my name keeps getting being said on air, my actual name, and that I don't think is a good thing. It, because if we don't do anything about it. Now, I had the idea uh, of doing an on-air sign, and so this would be it. So in here, we have the, this is a USB adapter. I have plenty of these now. Oh my God, I have so many of these USB adapters. I got so many of them. Like, I only have like, I only have like so many apple bricks. What am I gonna do with all of them? All of this. <laughs> oh man. Anyway, then we have the manual, the instructions, which I don't think is necessary. Then we have the, I believe, the actual light it's And then we have the light itself. Oh, this flap opens up. Wow. And then, and then this is it right here. Covered in all of this nice stuff. Kind of like you're actually on the air. And this does take batteries as well, which is optional if you want to run this off of battery power. But right now, I prefer to run this. I right now prefer to run this on actual uh, electric power. And there it is. There is the on-air label. That's pretty nice. We're halfway through. Uh, next up, the 
Uh, there was actually a remote control for my HO Skill train that actually uh, the power cord on it recently broke. In fact, it broke a while ago. So, let's go ahead and open up a replacement controller that I got for it for Christmas. This is all. Um, this is a Christmas present. The on-air sign was in Dreddy, by the way. All right, so this is the box for it. And when we open it, we should get the usual accessories inside. This here is manual and safety information. Oh, wow. This cord is actually a lot smaller than it was. So apparently this must be a, a newer version. This must be a newer version of the HO scale remote. So now we don't have any more of those huge, big, those huge big black blocks that used to be. It's now it's now much smaller. That's what I like. And it even mentions that it's a transformer. And just for fun, let's open up the safety manual and information guides and everything like that. Just to see what they all say. So when we pull it out yeah of course it gives uh, caution information this is a that's the warranty card same thing in Spanish and then there's the uh, and then it gives information about warranty and service assistance And then pretty much it gives pretty much everything inside of here is safety information. So basically all that's in here is just important warranty and safety information. Which I don't need to refer to. And then we have the remote. which looks so much different than it did previously. So now pretty much by this point, you have to guess the speeds. You can't, you can no longer, yeah, you can't, uh, you can no longer judge the speed. And then here is the, here are the two cords. Um, this one, I assume, is for if you're running an HOS, if you're running, if you're running it to an older layout, you have to attach the um, other end of the cord. That one I can discard because I do not need that. This is the one I will be primarily using. This is the cord I will be primarily using because I have HO scale. Well, because I use well because I use HO scale trains. So, what is the point of such? So, in here is a package. It's just a typical ordinary package, but it's actually something else. If you remember my video from Virginia Beach, you will recognize that I actually wanted this thing. And so now I officially have it. 
which actually, in my opinion, brings an homage to what was the snow globe. I haven't told the story of that uh, yet, but when I was little, I used to have a little snow globe. It was it was one of those snow globes that have, you know, that ones that play music. It's a small one that runs on a little timer. It, it's it's the snow globe actually changes colors like it goes on a rainbow cycle and it plays little renditions of tunes i could only name a few of them out of all of them i can only name like a couple i couldn't name them all this is the exact one we saw this is the exact one i saw So what this is, it's very heavy, so when I set this down, I need to be very careful, very cautious, because it is fragile. But what this thing is, uh, it can run on both batteries and electric, electrical power. So these are all the songs it plays. And then on the side there is the switch. Okay, so now it's connected. So this is this is what it does. And this is the volume adjustment. That is the opening. That's the opening of the song. You can adjust the volume. This is mute. This is as loud as it can go. And then you can change between solid white and changing colors. You can do this. The songs are entirely random. This mutes the music. They can't change the order, um, but this right here is a next button, which I believe, I don't know where that button ended up, I don't know how it managed to not make it into this specific one, but what I can tell you is that if you press that, it will automatically move over to the next song. Oh, so I can't get my finger in there. That's unfortunate. And then this basically just turns it on and off. And then on the back side, there's also a timer function, which, yes, you can operate it on either power or US. You can operate it on either batteries or USB. I prefer USB. However, I'm going to need. However, this will actually be perfect for next Christmas, too. So it requires three C batteries. The timer. So, so what it'll do is it'll be on for six hours. And that, so basically it'll be on for six hours and then it will shut off. Uh, Oh, here we go. Here was the button that fell out. So I believe we can just... I believe we can... Push it back. Oh. Well, let's try it anyway. So that advances to the next song. Starts over. More simpler now. 
Next up are these lights. These are LED message lights. I believe I got these from Dave and Buster's too. So what these are, these are essentially just message lights that you hang up on your wall and it spells out a message. You spell out any kind of message you want. So pretty much every light has its own thing. And then here are all of the letters. Now, right now I'm gonna leave the, I don't know where I'm gonna put these yet. So right now I'm just gonna set these aside. So right now I'm just gonna set these aside. Oh, they run on batteries. But now the question is, I don't even know where I'm going to put all this. Because I don't even know where I'm going to hang this up on my wall. But you know what? I'll find a way at some point. But you know what? At some point in time, I'll find a way to hang this up. And now we come to the all important computer upgrades specifically these are for my desktop computer something new for our weekly test stream is this webcam so what I what I believe the uh, so what the purpose of this is going to be is so that way during my weekly test stream not only can you see the not only are you going to see just the computer screen but you're also going to be able to hear the audio uh, from my radios in my room. Apparently there's two pieces of tape attached on this thing. lot of stuff for me to deal with. Alright, when we pull it out, all we have is just the webcam itself and the connectors. Okay, I don't know if I like the way this looks. Because it says it connects to an input jack. So... How does this work? Does it connect to an... It connects to an input jack. And I assume it connects to the headphone in jack. I think it connects either... I think it goes either or. Yeah, it goes either or. So you can choose if you want to use USB or headphone or headphone jack. I prefer USB, so I'm gonna use USB. So let me... So it's been connected. And I'll show you how this works. So now that it's gonna detect I had the I had the camera app temporarily disabled. And there it is. I think we can change the focus. So we change the focus. So that's the focus. I'm gonna go ahead and stow these two twisty ties in the box. We're down to the second to last item. This is a new, this is a microphone that's actually gonna be replacing, it's gonna be replacing this microphone. 
that I've had for a while. It's pretty cheap. In fact, it's so cheap that this whole the whole USB thing is broken apart. In fact, I had to use tape just to put it back together and keep it in one piece. Well, that will no longer be a hassle now that I have this. This is going to be a huge change in the way we broadcast our, our things. So let me find... Oh, this opens up just like that one. Okay. So, pull this out. This is the... Oh, jeez. Um, okay, this is the microphone. This is the cord. And this here is the stand. So this here is the stand, which actually easily folds out, which actually folds out easily to meet your needs, which actually can be adjusted. And then you attach the microphone by by twisting it into place. And then you know, adjust its position if need be. And then this is the cord. That's the USB. Man, all four USB ports are about to be taken over on my on my main PC. Oh my gosh. Now, we have to find, there is the back, that's where the cord goes in, and in fact, just like, so we don't have any problems with the front, I'm actually just going to redirect the entire microphone to the back of the computer, and I will plug it in like so. Oh, that is nice. It's setting up. That is beautiful. This is going to be a beautiful upgrade. And then if we look here, it says Fi Fine. That is so much nicer now. That is a much nicer upgrade. I'm going to pull up my weekly test folder because remember, this is usually the folder where I have all of the things. We'll pull up the video capture device. Should be detected. And I will set this down here, right below the screen. Merge that into the folder, like so. And I usually rename this to Camera View. So pretty much you'll just see the zone guard. And then at other times I'll just point it toward, I'll just point it toward my other radios at some point. But it'll fluctuate. It'll fluctuate between each time. And also, it does actually have a built-in mute function that I think I forgot to demonstrate. So I don't have to worry about even going to the to my computer and just hitting the button. So I can just tap here, and it mutes. So I can push here to mute. This is unmute. I can see the colors when it's unmuted. I can just tap here to mute it. See, I don't, I don't have to go here and click this button anymore. Now I can just tap here. That's it. That's very easy. It's the easiest microphone I will ever obtain. And boy, am I happy for this change. And now we've come to the final item, and it is going to be the best one yet. And I'm sure this is the moment you've all been waiting for.
a new addition to my weather radio collection, or my radios in general. This is the Kato KA110. This is a this is a weather AM FM radio and is also an MP3 player, which is very different from many other radios compared to. You know, the 12519 only has Skywarn, and it's the only radio, it's the only weather alert radio made to the public that has Skywarn built in. All right, so let's go ahead and take out the contents. Wow, this thing is quite small. Quite small now that I think about it. So here it is, and it has a plastic film. And we will peel it off, and there it is. And next up we have its charger cable, which goes from USB to USB-C. I believe it goes from, yeah, it goes from USB to USB-C. And this is its rechargeable battery. This is also its, this is its battery. Reminds me of those Samsung, remember, reminds me of those Samsung phones from back in the day. Remember, you know those, you know all those, uh, you know all those Samsung phones that you used to get from back in the day that came with rechargeable batteries like this? All right, if I put it in the right way, it should power on. Here we go. Am I putting in this in right? And hopefully this thing will turn on for the first time. It's in. And that is the charging. Okay, so that's the charging. Okay, so I, okay, so I believe I did install the battery, right? So I believe I did install the battery, right? This is a rechargeable lithium ion battery. It's 3.7 volts. All right, let's see, I can skip this. There we go. So here is the official operation. So we'll just let it charge. And while it does that, let's actually take some time to get to, to, get to know this. So this switches between, oh man, I need to clear off a lot of my desk here. So anyway, this is the weather band. Developed across portions of northern Illinois this evening. This is, is volume down. This is volume down. So this is volume down. So that's volume down. So let's see, there's supposed to be a memory function. Key lock. Digital volume. 15 is memory. Now, I don't think we can program NOAA bands. So I can type in, an, I can press a number. And it'll change, and it'll switch to the corresponding frequency. Now there's too much technological interference, so, so, that's the battery. And then I can, I can press channel 7, and then it'll switch to channel 7, like so. 
I can press 2 and it'll switch to channel 2. So then I'll go to lock port. And then I can do channel 9, which would be WG9. But since channel 9 is not a thing on the NOAA band, it will not change to channel 9. And then I can switch between weather band and FM by hitting the FM AM button. And then I can switch and then I can scroll through the frequencies. Then I can use the forward button to move it through the frequencies. Now I wonder what kind of power we can get out of this thing. That's the question. But right now, I actually want to program some of the FM AM frequencies because I believe this can store up to 10 presets. So what I want to program are the Air 1s. I want to mainly program the Air 1s and K-Loves. Because the reason why I bought this is so I can monitor Air 1 and keep an audio recording. So this is Air 1 right here. Yeah, it's probably not good at deaccent, really. Now, I don't know how good it is when it comes to deaccenting, but it probably doesn't do good when it's plugged in. Maybe because of all the technological interference, but whatever. So, to store the radio station, you press button 5. Oh, it's long press. So we long, so we hold down button number 5, and then we can put it on channel 1. So now it is stored as the first preset. And we can... This thing, I... Now, this thing can store a lot of, uh, I believe this thing can store... To manually store the station, so... We long press it, we select channel 1, and then we press enter, save, which indicates it's successfully saved. I wonder how many presets it can save on here. So then, so then I'll show you like so. So let's say I want to go to another frequency. Please insert TF. Well, that means, so that means I can insert a card. And then mode. So I have to use the fast forward button. So I have to use the fast forward. So I have to use this to force scroll. So I have to use this to force, have to use this to force scroll. So right now it's locked into channel one. I'll turn this down. Yeah, this is already kind of difficult to set up. it'll search for the clearest signal, like here. So I can just keep holding it down until it comes up with a clear signal. So then I'll keep holding it down. And then here we go. Here's 92.5. This is the Kalb K-Love. 
then I can hold then I can hold down five and I can tell it to program this as channel two. So then I can I can just press the numbers like so. So then channel one, this is air one. And then channel two, this is the Calves K Love. Channel three does not have anything programmed. Now, how many presets can this store? Gee, I wonder how many. I wonder how many channels this thing can store. Now, I'm probably going to do the most common frequencies. I'm not going to do all of them. So then I'll. Here's WXRT. I'm sure you all know the significance behind this. So I'll set this one as channel three. Okay, that's saved. And then we'll go to the end of the band. But what we can do with this is we can actually record, uh, we can actually record live broadcasts off of this device into, uh, onto the SD card. And we can use it on the, and we can use it on our computer at some point. All right, so that's all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna go any farther with this on air, but that's about all that I'm gonna do right here with you on air. So that is the unboxing of our massive Christmas lot. So thank you for watching this massive unboxing video. And we'll see you in the next one.